Let us pray. Lord Jesus, give us the grace to heed John's words to repentance and confession and faith. And Lord, we also pray that you would baptize us with the Holy Spirit. We ask all these things in your precious name. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Are you a patient person? I am not. Even if you are, and God bless you if you are, I think it's safe to say that we 21st century Americans are not a patient people. And we live in a time and a place that caters to our impatience, enables it, maybe even encourages it. I mean, remember when we couldn't have any item on earth delivered to our doorstep in two days or less? What was that like? Wild. Remember when if we wanted to watch a movie, we had to drive down to the video store like an animal and pick it up? And if it wasn't there, we got an endless argument with our friends and family about what movie we were going to watch. We'd pace the aisles for a long time. Someone at the 8 a.m. said, you know, RJ, how impatient I am. I would go harass the video store clerk to check the inbox for movies that had been recently <laughs> returned in case the one I was looking for was there. Anyone ever done that? I've done that. Look in there. Look in the box. I am uh, old enough, believe it or not, to remember a time when if I wanted to get in touch with someone, I'd pick up something called a, a telephone and it had a rotary dial when I was growing up. You, know, you missed a number, you had to start over again. And if they weren't there, I had to leave a message for them on an answering machine and just wait and hope that they might actually call me back. Wild. Uh, I will confess to this. I was thinking about this morning. I think I know one of my older son's phone numbers. The other one I do not know because all you have to do is push a button. Right? How many people do you know and love where you used to have to memorize their phone number? You don't have to do that anymore, right? It's all on your phone. We're an impatient people living in an impatient world at an impatient time. Or to quote Veruca Salt from Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, I don't care how, I want it now. I want it now. But that's not really how life works, is it? Life takes time. Life requires patience. It takes nine months for a baby to be born and 18 years at the very least to raise a child. Relationships take time. Friendships take time. It takes time to build a life, to build a career, to build a family. It takes time to heal, to forgive, to recover. I was visiting one of our parishioners in the hospital recently who was recovering from surgery, and he just hated it, hated the waiting, hated the boredom. And I said, yeah, that's why they call it being a patient. <laughs> and it's no fun being patient. When you read through the pages of the Bible, it's hard not to notice just how long God makes people wait the patience he requires of them. You look in Genesis, Abraham and Sarah were promised a son. They couldn't have children, and God said, I'm going to deliver. And then how long did he make them wait? Does anyone know? 25 years. 25 years before Isaac finally came along. Moses lived in exile in Midian for 40 years before God appeared to him in that burning bush and said, it's time to go home. I got a job for you. The people of Israel uh, lived as slaves for 400 years in Egypt before God finally led them out. We just heard from the prophet Isaiah this morning. We heard these wonderful words of the deliverance that God promises to his people where he says, comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term. Her penalty is paid. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill be made low. What an image and a 
a message, a promise. And yet from the time that Isaiah first spoke those words to the time when John the Baptist showed up on the scene to fulfill them, as we heard in our gospel reading, was almost 800 years. 800 years of waiting, watching, praying, hoping, hoping that the Messiah was going to show up, waiting for deliverance, praying for God to reveal Himself. Life requires patience, and faith requires patience. God requires patience. He does not operate on our timeline. As someone once said, uh, unfortunately, God is never early, (laughs) but He always seems to be on time. And that's what the Apostle Peter speaks about in his letter this morning. And remember, Peter was not a patient man. He was impulsive, sometimes reckless. He had seen Jesus crucified, resurrected, ascend into heaven with his very own eyes. And ever since then, he'd been waiting for Jesus to come back. Most scholars think that this letter was probably written between 65 and 68 AD. And Jesus was crucified, resurrected, ascended in 33. So Peter's been waiting for 35 years for Jesus to come back. And now as he writes, he's sitting in a jail cell in Rome awaiting execution under the Roman Emperor Nero. And he's writing to a church that's being persecuted throughout the empire, a church that is waiting for Jesus to come back, wondering when he's going to show up and rescue them, show up and make all things right. And so Peter writes to them in their impatience, in their waiting and questioning, and says, do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow about his promise as some think of slowness. God's not on the same timeline that we are, Peter says, but he knows what he's doing and he will act when he thinks best, when the time is right. So we need to trust him. And then Peter talks about patience, but not in the way we might expect. Here's what he writes. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Therefore, beloved, while you are waiting for these things, waiting for God to show up, waiting for Jesus to return, waiting for your salvation, strive to be found by him at peace, without spot or blemish, and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. You see, we think that God demands patience from us, and there is certainly some truth to that. Life requires patience. But perhaps the deeper truth is that God in his mercy, in his grace, is patient with us. Remember that God was patient with Abraham. God was patient with Moses. God was patient with Israel, even when they all made massive mistakes. Remember what Abraham did while he was waiting for God to deliver on his promise? He said, oh, maybe God meant me to sleep with my slave girl, Hagar, (laughs) and have another child. He blew it, but God still blessed. Moses made lots of mistakes. Israel was constantly chasing after other gods, blowing it, breaking the law, but God was patient with them. Remember Jesus with Peter, Peter who denied him not once, not twice, but three times. And Jesus seeks him out and redeems him, saves him, brings him back, says, you are my guy. Even when all these people lost patience, when they lost faith, God was patient with them and faithful to them. You know, the root of the word um, for patience is a Latin word, it's Pati, P-A-T-I, pati. It's the same root word um, for passion, passion. And pati means to suffer. Patience means to suffer. Like that man in the hospital, our congregant in the hospital, that suffering patient. But remember also that Jesus, in his patience, in his love, he also suffered. He didn't need to go to the cross 
He couldn't have gotten, he could have gotten out of it. He could have tried to find another way. He could have inflicted pain rather than enduring it. But God, in his infinite patience, suffered for us. He is waiting for us, waiting for the world to trust him, to put our faith in him, to love him. What does Peter say? He is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. God is waiting on us. If there's one prayer request I get more than any other, it might be parents wanting uh, prayers for their children. When will my daughter find a job? When will my son find someone to love him? When will my children reconcile? When will they find faith? When will they be healed? Or maybe just, when will they call? (laughs) When I receive these requests, I always pray exactly for what that parent wants. And then I remind them, as I remind myself all the time, that they are just surrogate parents, that God is their child's true father, And that as much as we may love our children and think we want what's best for them, God loves them more, more deeply, more thoroughly than we can possibly imagine. And God knows the plans he has for them. Of course, God also loves us more than we can imagine. He's also our parent and he knows what he's doing. And so I urge them and myself to be patient, patient with our kids, patient with ourselves, patient with our friends, patient with our enemies, patient with our families, patient with God, even as he has shown himself to be so uh, beautifully and graciously patient with us. So let me read one more time what Peter says, then I'll be done. The Lord is not slow about his promise, as some think of slowness, but is patient with us, not wanting any to perish, but all to come to repentance. Therefore, beloved, while we are waiting for these things, Strive to be found by him at peace and regard the patience of our Lord as salvation. Amen.